What's up everybody, this is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a very interesting log trick double integral. It's the double integral over 0 to pi by 2 of log sine x divided by cosine y plus cosine x divided by sine y dx dy. And a nice place to start would be the argument of the logarithm function, because we can make use of the properties of the trig functions quite nicely here. Okay, so let's write this as the double integral over the region 0 to pi by 2 squared of log sine x times sine y plus cosine x times cosine y divided by sine y times cosine y dx dy. And here's where the knowledge of trigonometry comes in handy. We can write this as the double integral over the region 0 to pi by 2 squared of log what exactly is the numerator? The numerator is cosine x minus y, and the denominator is one half of sine 2y. Okay, cool. And now using the properties of the logarithm, we can write this as the double integral over 0 to pi by 2 squared of log cosine x minus y minus the logarithm of 1 half, or plus the logarithm of 2, if you'd like, minus uh, the logarithm of sine 2y dx dy. Now let's make use of the linearity of the integration operator and write this as the double integral over the region 0 to pi by 2 squared of log cosine x minus y dx dy, and this log 2 term is just a constant, so we would have log 2 times, let's see, 0 to pi by 2, so that would be pi squared by 4, log 2 minus another double integral, this one again over 0 to pi by 2 squared, and we have log sine 2y dx dy. So we now have two integrals to evaluate, and we're going to start off with i sub 2 because it's much easier. So I sub 2 is the double integral, terribly sorry about that, the double integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine 2y dx dy. And because the integrand is independent of the x variable, we can just multiply the y integral by the interval length for the x integral, which is, of course, pi by 2. And we have also the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine 2y dy, which is related to a very famous log trig integral by Euler. Let me show you what I'm talking about using a substitution. We're going to let 2y equal z, which implies that dy equals one half of dz. Okay, cool. And why can't I write the number one correctly? Anyway, so i sub 2 equals pi by 4 now because of the extra factor of 1 half from the differential element. And we have the integral from 0 to, let's see, as y approaches pi by 2, we have 2 times pi by 2, which is of course pi. And we have log sine of z dz. Now, Euler's famous log trig integrals have intervals of integration from 0 to pi by 2, but here we're integrating from 0 to pi, which is no problem whatsoever, because the logarithm function is an injective function, and the sine function has this really nice symmetry along the line x equals pi by 2. So whatever area under the curve log sine x has from 0 to pi by 2, it would have exactly the same area between pi by 2 and pi, bear in mind that this is the graph for y equals sine x. Log sine x is, I haven't graphed that, but you get why the areas are equal because, well, logarithm is injective. So yeah, everything seems to be in order. So all we need is to replace the interval of integration by 0 to pi by 2 and multiply the whole thing by 2. So we have pi by 2 times the result of this integral, which is negative pi by 2 times log 2. So that means we have negative pi squared by 4 times log 2 as the result of i sub 2. 
And if you look back at I sub one, no, terribly sorry about that, the target negral I, we have this factor of pi squared by four log two minus I sub two, and I sub two already has a negative sign as its result, so that's a positive. And this implies that the target integral I equals I sub one plus twice of pi squared by four, which is of course pi squared by two times log two. And now for the evaluation of I sub one. Now I sub one is a pretty cool double integral in itself. And a nice place to start would be integration by parts with respect to X. So we have the integral from zero to pi by two of X times the logarithm of cosine X minus Y with the limits being zero and pi by two, minus the integral from zero to pi by two of x times, let's see, we have cosine x minus y in the denominator now, and we have sine x minus y, but with a negative sign. So that means we have a plus sign, sign out here, dx, and we have this outer integration being carried out with respect to y. Now using the, lin the linearity of the integration operator again, we have the integral from zero to pi by two. Let's just apply the limits of integration here as well. So as x approaches pi by two, we get pi by two times the logarithm of cosine pi by two minus y would be sine y dy because as x approaches zero, the integrand would collapse to zero. And we also have this double integral from zero to pi by two again, of x times the sine of x minus y, divided by, rather we should write this as x times the tangent of x minus y dx dy. Now the first integral here is again Euler's log trig integral, which sorts out to negative pi by two times log two, so that means we have a negative pi squared by four term being multiplied by log two. And this integral is pretty interesting as well. First up, we're gonna switch up the order of the integration operators, and we now have the integral from zero to pi by two of x times the integral from zero to pi by two of the tangent of x minus y dy dx. And now we can integrate the tangent function here with respect to y, which is again, a pretty simple task we have negative pi squared by four, terribly sorry about that, times log two plus the integral from zero to pi by two of x times, what exactly do we have here? Tangent gives us negative log sine, if I remember correctly. Now it's negative log cosine. So we have log, but wait, we have negative y as the argument, so we divide by negative one. Yeah, it's a positive log cosine x minus y, with the limits being zero and pi by two, integration now with respect to x. So we have again this pi squared by four term, plus what exactly do we have left? We have integral zero to pi by two, x times as, y approaches pi by two, and we know that the cosine function is an even function anyway, so we can write that as pi by two minus x. That is, we have log, I stopped writing ln because, well, my handwriting makes, makes it hard to distinguish the n's from the u's, so I'm just going with the classic log log. So we have log, what exactly was I saying? Yeah, it was cosine pi by two minus x, which is of course a sine function. So we have log sine y minus the logarithm of the cosine of x, integration with respect to x. Okay, cool. And these are two very similar integrals, to be honest. We have negative pi squared by four log two plus integral zero to pi by two x log sine what am I doing? This was an x. x log sine x minus x log cosine x. And again, we can invoke the linearity of the integration operator. Everything's looking good so far. And for this integral, we could invoke the transformation going from the, from the purple to the yellow color. 
and the mathematical transformation is going from x to pi by 2 minus x. So we have this phase shift happening, which gives us the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of pi by 2 times the logarithm of sine x minus the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of what exactly? We have x times the logarithm of sine x over here as well. Okay, cool. So we have this negative sign out here as well. The two negatives would cancel out, meaning that we have the target integral I sub 1 being negative pi squared by 4 times log 2 plus twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times log sine x dx. And we also have, again, Euler's log trig function. We have minus pi by 2 times negative pi by 2 again, right? So that's a positive pi squared by 4 log 2. So cancellation. And yeah, all we need now is to evaluate this one last integral. Now for this last integral, we're going to make use of the series expansion for the log of sine x. So we have log sine x equal to negative log 2 minus the sum over the positive integers k of cosine 2kx divided by k. So for our integral, all we have to do is multiply everything by x and then integrate from 0 to pi by 2. And again, the first integral here is pretty standard. We have x squared by 2, and that should give me pi squared by 8, correct? So we have negative pi squared by 8 times log 2 minus, now here we can obviously switch up the order of the integration and summation operators. So we have the sum over k of 1 by k times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times the cosine of 2kx dx. And now all we need is an integration by parts. So we'll differentiate the x function here and integrate the cosine 2kx function. On the first integration, we get sine of 2kx divided by 2k. And on one more integration, yeah, we'll need that we have negative cosine 2kx divided by 4k squared. And on differentiating the x term, we get 1 and 0. We have the alternating plus and minus signs. This term goes here, and that term goes there. And with these limits, the limits being 0 and pi by 2, the first term, that's x times the sine of 2kx, would collapse to a big fat zero, terribly sorry about that. Much better. So it collapses to zero and we're left with the two negatives canceling out. So that means we would still have a negative sign out there. We have negative pi squared by eight times log two, terribly sorry about that, minus a quarter times the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by 4k cubed, because we already have a 1 by k outside the integral. And we have cosine 2kx with the limits being 0 and pi by 2. Now as x approaches pi by 2, we get cosine of k times pi, which is negative 1 to the k. Yeah, that sounds right. So we have negative pi squared by 8 times log 2 minus a quarter times the sum over the positive integers k of, wait a second, terribly sorry about that, 1 by k cubed times negative 1 to the k minus 1. Now, whenever k is an even number, we would have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we're only interested in the sum over the positive odd integers. So that means we have negative pi squared by 8 times log 2 minus a quarter times the sum over the positive integ integers n of 1 by 2n minus 1 cubed, and negative 1 to the 2n minus 1 would be negative 1, so we have negative 2, and that means cancellation here, some more cancellation here. Okay, cool, so we have negative pi squared by 8 times log 2 
plus the sum, which is actually 7 eighths of Apari's constant. So we have 7 eighths of zeta 3. That's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times the logarithm of sine x. And for the target integral i, we had what exactly? We had twice of this integral, so that means we have negative pi squared by 4 times log 2 plus 7 eighths of Apari's constant. And wait a minute, wait a minute. We were evaluating the integral i sub 1, correct? Yeah, this is the result of i sub 1. i sub 1 is just twice of that integral, so that's i sub 1. And now our target integral i is i sub 1, which is 7 eighths of Apari's constant, terribly sorry about that, 7 eighths of Apari's constant minus pi squared by 4 times log 2. And we also had a surviving negative pi squared by 4 times log 2 term. So this implies that our really cool double integral has a really beautiful result. We have 7 eighths of zeta 3 minus pi squared. Wait, that is not what happened. In fact, we didn't have a negative pi squared by 4 log 2 term surviving. We had the target integral i being the result of i sub 1. That is 7 eighths of Apari's constant minus pi squared by 4 log 3, log 2. And we had a surviving positive pi squared by 2 log 2 term. So this is the case of 1 minus 1 half thing. And this implies that our really cool double integral equals 7 eighths of Apari's constant plus pi squared by 4 times log 2. Now I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Remember to drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.